I'm in Mount Compass. In fact, we can see it just behind us here. Yes. And I'm with Cynthia and Russell Bowles, who have been farming 436 acres uh, in this part of the world, on this very spot, in fact, for the last 57 years. I told him earlier he doesn't look a day over 90. Um, <laughs> I'm not and, far off. <laughs> and now you have on this land, you have sheep, you have stock, you have livestock, you have cattle, you also have um, crops. So you're, you're farming in many different ways. Now all of these things depend on having water, don't they? That's correct. Yes. Right. Now does the government supply this water to you? No, the, we supply our own water supply. And where does it come from? The sky? We, we, yeah, well, some does yes. in the dam, but the others come from the bores, two bores that we have. Right, now you dug these boreholes yes. at your expense Yes. and you take the water from them yes. at your expense Yes. and you pump it wherever it's needed at your expense. Exactly. Right, okay, and now we're standing in front of one of these uh, the boreholes here. Yes. How deep does this one go? That one's uh, 40 metres or 120 feet approximately. Okay, so it's quite a depth yes. and that's a fairly big job digging down to get the water out of oh, there. Yeah. Yes. And that comes up, do you pump it up or is it just under natural uh, pressure? Pumped up. It's pumped up mm -hmm. and then it comes through the system here. Now, what are we looking at that's, here? That's the instance? meter that we were compelled to put on by the NRM board, uh, who are regulating water supplies in the area. Now, the NRM board, that's the Natural Resources Management Board for the Lofty Ranges. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Now, this board, I think, was set up under the Natural Resources Management Act of 2004. Yes. And it produced a Natural Resources Management Plan 2006 for the whole of South Australia. Yes. And they have told you that you have to fit a meter so as to monitor the amount of water that you are using. Yes, that's correct. Right, now let me just get the law clear here. If you are taking water for your household, for use in controlling fires, or for watering your stock and your sheep, do you require any kind of license or permit? We, we have a license for the bore for irrigation. No, I'm just asking about oh, the other things. The first. other things, and uh, no, we do not need a license for that, and and it does not have to be metered. Right. Whereas for irrigation, yes, then you do need a license. Yes. And for irrigation, that does need to be metered. Yes. Right. Now, <coughs> as I see this bore coming up out of the land, and let's just have a look at it. It comes up from the hole here yeah. with a concrete stopper and so forth through the pipe here. Yes. The first thing it hits is this uh, stop valve which shuts the whole thing off. Right. And then it comes to this gadget here which is the meter. That's now good. here's my question. <coughs> if you are entitled to take water for your household and for your stock and for management of fires without a license and without metering, how does this meter tell whether the water that's coming through it is used for irrigation or used for your stock of your household? It can't. It can't tell. No, so why right. then were you stupid enough to put it there? Because we were forced to put it there. So it wasn't your stupidity. No, it was somebody it was else's NRM stupidity. Now the check. National Resources Management Board, did they actually come here and stand over yes, you? Yes, yes they did. And what did they say? They said that all the water including stock and domestic has to go through the meter and I said stock and domestic water is exempt and they said no it's all got to go through the meter. And so did they quote any law that gave them any right to insist on this? No, not that I'm aware of, no, they just impounded that, that, that it had to all go through the meter. So they insisted, even though as far as you understand it, yeah. the law does not require that. That's right. Now since, and therefore, what did it cost you to do this? Oh, about, the whole lot, about a thousand dollars I would think. And yeah. did they pay you that money? Because they want to meet it. It's not no, your. No, your, your we, we paid for everything. You had to pay for it. We had to pay for because it. Because they simply told you you had to. Exactly. Right. Now, um, <clears throat> if they told you you had to have this meter and they didn't pay for it and they stood over you to tell you where it had to be put, did you at any later stage come across, across any documents by them that made it absolutely clear? that water for stock and domestic use did not need to be metered? Yes, well, I did find in, in two of their printed documents where that is the case. So uh, in other words, they made you incorrectly fit this meter? Exactly. Right. And what would you like to do about it? Well, per, it, it, the, the water can be metered, yes. and if they want to work out how much water we're using, yes. they're free to come and measure it, yes. but we're not going to pay for it. It's our own water. Yeah. Uh, alternatively, that will have to be redirected so that the stock and domestic water does not go through the meter. 
Right, so if they were to charge you, you would certainly insist on that being redirected, yes. and they would have to pay because they incorrectly told you where to put it. Yes. All right, so um, what I think uh, you might like to think of doing is to write to them, yes. saying that you've come across these subsequent statements by them making it clear that the advice you were given was incorrect, exactly. and that you were ordered to do something which they had no power to order you to do, yes. and that you want a refund of the cost of installing this meter, plus an additional sum to put the meter where it needs to be, monitoring only the irrigation and not everything else. Right. Um, do you think that would be a sensible I, thing for I you to do? I think it would be. Yeah. If, if, they, if we can have the whole law changed, yes. repealed and, and start afresh, yes. whereby we do not have to pay for our own water and 99% yes. and, and of the people in the area agree with me, yes. then it can stay as it is. Right, because so it won't affect us if we don't have to pay. So let's just yeah. ask you a, a wider question. Are you conscious that other people have had difficulties with officials of the Natural Resources Management Board yes, telling I them to do things that were illegal? Yes, I have. And do you think there's generally a feeling that this board is welcomed by the farmers or not? Definitely not. And would because you say that that was near unanimous or just a small minority of no, troublemakers like yourself? Near, near new man, unanimous. Nearly unanimous. People yes. really don't yes. like this board. We, we can do without people telling us what to do. I've been on this property for 57 years and you've only got to look at it to see how it's managed. So you and think that after 57 years you know your business? I certainly do. Do you, Jeff? Yes, yes. Well, I can tell you that on behalf of the Natural Resources Management Board, you know nothing at all about it. <laughs> that's, <exactly. laughs> that's what they would like us so, to think. <laughs> so uh, the point is this. Um, if I were to say to you that it might be possible to put forward a bill in Parliament to repeal the 2004 Natural Resources Management Act, to scrap the 2006 Natural Resources Management P Plan, and to abolish forever the Natural Resources Management Boards and replace them with what you were used to before, which was the Animal and Plant Boards, which were really quite sensible and very small. Mm -hmm. Would you say that was a good idea or a bad idea? I would say it's a good idea. And That's how much support do you think that idea would have from farmers locally, well, so they don't get pestered with this kind of nonsense that we've had going yes. on here? Well, I, I would think that we'd get 100% support of, of the farmers around. Excellent. Well, in that very case... very close to it. In that case, what are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to uh, pursue that avenue. Excellent. Well, just, uh, I should now intervene a little bit here and say, I shall be very happy to help you, because what I've seen and what I've heard throughout South Australia yeah. from farmers about what has been done to them by officials of this board. It's clear that this board has mm. gone rogue. Absolutely. It is not being properly supervised by the parliament that created it. Uh, MPs often do this. They set up agencies like this. They shovel enormous powers in their direction. Then they don't supervise how they're exercised. And if you go to them and you say, look, here is story after story after story. They say, oh, no, this can't be. These are people we appointed. They yeah. must be all right. <laughs> and, of course, actually, as we now see on the ground, here is the physical evidence. That's right. Here is the meter in completely the wrong place, yes. even if it was worth metering it anyway. Yes. Because I have a, a wider question, again, about the water management, which is what the board seems chiefly obsessed with. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, you might say, well, in, a, in a, a largely desert climate, which is what Australia is, being concerned about making sure you have enough water is a sensible thing. I mean, right. you, 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 we can go with them that far. Yeah, it's right yeah. that they should give a focus to that. But here's my question. You've got various dams on this property, and you can hardly see them. No. I dare say from above we'd get a better view. Yeah. But the point is, you have 436 acres, of which perhaps one or two acres might be occupied by dams? That's about it, yes. Yeah. So in other words, the amount of water that those dams would retain as a percentage of the amount of water that's falling on this property, it's going to be less than half of oh, 1%. Uh, the absolute, minuscule. Just on this farm, yes, and it's tiny. Yeah, yeah. Now the point is this, surely all over Australia, the same is going to be the case. It does. It's, yeah. you know, you've got a tiny population of, what, 20 million people or something? 23. Uh, yes. In, in, in a territory that's the size of the whole of Europe. Yes. Where we have, I think, 300 million people. Mm -hmm. So it's not exactly as though this is an overpopulated territory and therefore that the water is being drained away no. in huge quantities. Definitely not. So d are you conscious that the Natural Resources Management Board has ever done any calculations to show what percentage of the flow of water through the system that is uh, received from the sky and flows out to the sea in a bad year, in a drought year, which is when they have to do the sums, mm. um, 
is actually held back in various dams. I don't think that held. they've done any, uh, they, uh, they, if they have it's only a guess. Right, so there's been mm. no real proper no, calculation, no of, real no, survey no. done. You see, that to me strikes me as odd, because if you're right, that you're fairly typical, and that your dams represent perhaps half a percent yes. of the land area, and therefore half a percent of the amount of water captured, yes. then we're looking really at a, at a non-problem, aren't we? Absolutely. It makes yes. no difference that you, you use your dams for whatever purpose you want <coughs> no. to use them for. It's not going to change anything very much. No. So that's one side of it. But the other side of it is that all I hear from farmers like yourself is regulate, regulate, regulate. Absolutely. What I don't hear is any programme that the Natural Resources Management Board has put together for building a, an aqueduct under the sea from Tasmania, mm. where they have enormous surplus of yeah. water, and they could easily run it by gravity feed yeah. all the way into New South Wales and probably have a spur over to South Australia as well. Yeah, they um, they, the the yeah. largest aquifer in the world, as I understand it, comes all the way from the mountains of New Guinea under the sea and up in, in the Northern Territory somewhere. Yeah, right. And of course this is kept a deadly secret because the last thing they want is unlimited amounts of water coming <laughs> into <laughs> Australia because then they wouldn't have anything to regulate, would no, they? That's right. <laughs> and the third thing that I would do if I were looking how to make sure that in drought you could all survive is up in the lofty ranges and other high places, there are some places where the land is pretty marginal, you can't do much else with it, I would build enormous reservoirs yes. that would gradually fill up in the years of plenty and then you could use the water in the and years of drought. Mm. This is what we do in Britain, it was done in the Victorian era, they built huge dams, I mean really enormous dams, yeah, right. and those dams are still used to supply the primary water supply to the vastly expanded cities of today because they had the foresight to do, to do that. that yeah. Are you conscious of any such plan by the Natural Resources not, Management Board? Not any at all. Haven't, haven't no, been mentioned. No. And when was a reservoir last built, oh, a proper big reservoir? About anywhere? 40 years ago? It was 1973, as I understand yeah, it, yeah, which yeah. is about right. Well, yeah. More or less exactly 40 years yeah, ago. Yeah. So he's right again. He knows his stuff this time. <laughs> well, thank you both very much, mm. Cynthia and Russell. Cynthia, what do you think of this? You must see the worry on your husband's face oh, when he's trying yes, to make all this yes, work. Yes, it is a worry. And, um, you know, we're hoping to uh, hand the farm down to our son. Yes. And he's a good worker. And what's he's his name and how old is Jeffrey. he now? Jeffrey. Right. He'll, he's uh, 46. We had another son we lost when he was five years old. Oh, so I'm we've sorry only got that. the one son. Yeah. But, um, you know. Free. And you'd like to hand a and working he's got farm onto him. Yes. yes, and yes. he's got a son and two daughters. So you can actually see this yes. going down yes. the generations yes. to them, yes. if only somebody doesn't stand in yes. the way. That's exactly it. Well, it was handed down to me. I've mm. always worked here since uh, yes. we came here, like I said, 57 years ago. So uh, I'd like to do the same. Our son's a very good worker and uh, he, he's, he's, helped, he's running the place now anyway. And uh, he uh, himself has a son, but whether he will be a farmer with all these restrictions, I doubt it. Well, that, of course, is a very sad thing, because farming is one of those professions that still goes down the generation yes. where it can. Mm. Mm. And what you can see here, ladies and gentlemen, is the fear on the faces of people who have been on this land for almost as long as I have been on the planet. They've been here 57 years. They want their son, who already manages it, to take it over. They want his son, if he is still able, to take it over from him so that the farm that they have created and they have loved, and you can see, well, you can't see it on the camera now, but if we just look around, we can see how beautiful it is. Mount Compass, just up there, you can see the summit. Mm -hmm. You can see the subsidiary summit. You can see the sheep grazing in the far distance. You can see the cattle here. I'm just describing what we can see from our angle. And then there's the irrigated uh, in-by fields here. So all of this is being beautifully managed. You can see it's neatly kept, it's sensibly run. And these people are being told by bureaucrats that they must now do things the bureaucrats' way, when for 57 years they've been getting on just fine without any such advice. And they now genuinely fear for their future, for their son's future, and for their grandson's future as farmers on this land, because they wonder whether the restrictions will eventually do what the UN's Agenda 21 program is intending to do which is to make sure that the earth is depopulated and that in particular any kind of commercial farming such as this, any kind of irrigation, any kind of use of herbicides or pesticides should be banned. Mm -hmm. That is the Agenda 21 proposal of the UN. 
They're trying to shut you down. You must, well, we for the sake of the future of your country and of humanity, fight them every step of the we, way. God we bless will. you both. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you.